Welcome to this episode of Trojan Poetry. This week I've chosen the poem. Mike has not read the poems in advance. Uh, I've got two poems by Jane Hirschfield, which are related in, in a way. So let's just start. This one is called My Species. Even a small purple artichoke boiled in its own bittered and darkening waters grows tender, grows tender and sweet. Patience, I think, my species. Keep testing the spiny leaves, the spiny heart. All right. The second poem, <laughs> I'm simple, but I'm sure, <laughs> sure you've got I'm, some questions. I'm ready. All I right. Think. Second poem is called All the Difficult Hours and Minutes by Jane Hirschfield. All the difficult hours and minutes are like salted plums in a jar, wrinkled, turned steeply into themselves. They mutter something the color of shark fins to the glass. Just so, calamity turns towards calmness. First, the jar holds the umabashi, then the rice does. All right. All right. right. Okay. Should I respond first? Sure. Or do you want to go ahead first? Sure. Okay. Well, my, I mean, my, my it's a lot first, to throw at you. Two my different first poems. question, yeah, is yeah. what is an ume, umebashi, right? Well, umebashi is a dried, it's a fruit, a ume, ume or ume, mm-hmm. I apologize, mm-hmm. uh, fruit, kind of like an apricot. Uh, and so okay. umebashi is like a dried, uh, salted apricot, kind of like an apricot. They call them dried plums or salted plums. Mm-hmm. So that's but like it's the more like an product apricot. of when you're salting the. Yeah. Plum. When you salt the plums, yeah. Okay. But it's really umi, but it, they call it salted plums. Okay. So just, All right. All right. That does help a little bit. I was going to yeah. say if it's an apricot, then I wasn't sure. Right. All right. Um, well, this seems to be a. Uh, I just thought of the show Chopped on uh, <laughs> the Food Network. Okay. Yeah. I've been watching that a lot. Kids Barbecue Championship. Mm-hmm. Okay. With my kids, we've been watching that a lot, and so obviously these are both tied together by the food themes. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one seems to me like you're you're peeling the onion and it's saying patient when she says patience i think my species keep testing the spiny leaves the spiny heart um she it's it's like a it's like a message Mm -hmm. right it's a declaration to humanity i guess that we need to don't don't give up you know there's more to a person than you see at first i thought I, i really like that first one the second one is a little more for something that short it's a little more <laughs> mysterious to me yeah. uh wrinkled they turn steeply into themselves and what is the i really like this line they mutter something the color of shark fins to the glass you know when you have someone saying so, or a, a, an object saying something that is a color yeah that's pretty funky what do you yeah. t- what do you call that where you can see is it synesthesia? synesthesia synesthesia yeah where you can mm-hmm. taste colors and things mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. um and then the last line stood out to me also first the jar holds the umibashi bashi then the rice does so it's like you take it out of the jar you place it on the rice you're about to eat it Mm -hmm. is there a difference there between being in the jar and out of the jar that seems to be important so what what's your take well i uh, obviously the food reference is one of the things that got me at first and then i began Mm -hmm. to think about how they both seem to be about um transformation Mm -hmm. and um food changing from one state to another state so in the my species one, uh, a small purple artichoke boiled in its own bitter and darkening waters. And, you know, you're beginning like, oh, okay, she's talking about cooking, and this mm-hmm. is what happens when you cook something. Uh, but then very clearly, uh, the spiny heart at the end, right? She's locking together that uh, connection or that comparison between people and the food, mm-hmm. and like a food, maybe if we, even we, with our spiny hearts, will eventually become something. Uh, tender and sweet, Mm -hmm. right? There is hope. It seems to me she's saying there is hope that even if we are spiny hearted, eventually we will become something better, Mm -hmm. right? Which I thought was a cool message. And just the, what, what I kept kind of, that was moving to me. And then the, the, my species, like like scientific diction of the word species. Yeah. It was kind of odd. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes you sets up like one frame like, oh, it's like it's scientific, but then it becomes about cooking and then it's about the heart at the end. So I thought that was a cool contrast mm-hmm. there. And then the second one, um, uh, it's not about people's hearts turning into something tender and sweet. It's about even that difficult hours and minutes. Like you might be going mm-hmm. through something difficult and um, some, you might be going through something difficult, but eventually it becomes or can transform into something delicious. And it's not exactly clear how because we have the 
shark fin colored muttering mm -hmm. um but calamity turns into calmness right yes. like even yeah. in the darkest moment there is hope or i mean it's just nature for mm -hmm. things to change mm -hmm. right yeah forever changes right i mean right and and in her case she thinks it's going to change or can change it's possible to change for the better yeah more compassionate more delicious right, right? more friendly um, yeah, when I re I was rereading it while you were you were going through it, there calamity turning towards calmness, and then up here you can grow tender and sweet, or uh, something can grow tender mm -hmm. and sweet. I also thought about the fact that both of these are purple. You know, a plum is purple, mm. and the artichoke is purple. I don't know necessarily what that means. Usually, <laughs> that means to me either royalty yeah. or you know bruising and darkness and things like that. And I like what you said about transformation because I think you hit it right on the hit the nail on the head there. Right. I still come back to that muttering something the color of shark fins to the glass. It just seems so like yeah. there's a ghost in there. It's like smoky yeah. or something. I don't know. I really like that line a lot. Yeah. It's kind of like it's getting all the bad stuff out oh. within the jar before calmness comes over it. And just the like the third line there in the second poem, wrinkled turns steeply into themselves. Mm -hmm. It's a transformation, but it's a transformation into itself, which is... Yeah, it's like shrinking and contracting into yeah. this wrinkled umibashi <laughs> right <laughs> and then uh, the transformation of it's something that's in the jar to something on the rice which as you then said would be something that we would eat right so there's even in so poems with such simple language and such simple imagery there's so much depth mm -hmm. right and so much uh, hope mm -hmm. and just kind of perseverance of things are going to change things are going they have to change right i mean like you said, it's just nature of the world is change. Yeah. Um, and it's it might take a while. before the light, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and it's even bitter, right? You know, it is, bit, it's, it is, the artichoke is bitter, mm -hmm. and it, but the water is darkening, right? And it's uh, still going to grow sweet and tender. So um, really interesting poems, I thought. Yeah. Jane yeah. Hirschfield. And we have uh, been doing the little book recommendation. So Jane Hirschfield actually has a book out called Entry, uh, Nine Gates, Entering the Mind of Poetry. It came out in 1998. And I thought I would read just a part, a little part there, the, like the very beginning of the book. Uh, she says, Every good poem begins in language awake to its own connections, language that hears itself and what is around it, sees itself and what is around it, looks back at those who look into its gaze and knows more perhaps even than we do about who and what we are. It begins, that is, in the body and mind of concentration. And so this is a really, uh, it's a really cool book. It's very, um, it's very practical in some ways, but then also very, um, almost mystical, I would say, in some ways. But it's very grounded in the sound of poetry and the structure of poetry. But it's not like a handbook where it's like, here are the forms of poetry. It's right. very much about... Uh, how language works and how it affects our consciousness and how we affect the poem. So I would recommend it. It's it's a dense read, mm -hmm. but it's really cool because you're like, wow, this is like a master poet talking about what poetry is. Mm -hmm. um, well, that piece you just read there yeah. reads like a prose poem. Right. I mean, really, that is a prose poem about what a poem is. So it's it's a meta. Uh, it's a meta piece, and then later on this same first page, she is already mentioning Aldous Huxley, James Joyce, Wordsworth, um, and, and the way that she works it in here is just really interesting and unexpected. You know, some of the references and the way that she talks about poetry, but it is concentration. I mean, basically, that's what our whole show has been, is we're <laughs> hyper-focused on right. these poems for a few minutes trying to pry something out, and I like what she says here about perhaps knows more than we do about who and what we are. And so it's like a mirror. It's a reflection of ourself, right. ourselves. And it's it also like goes a voice muttering with a shark fin <gasps> color. I was going to say, <laughs> it's like a tiny artichoke or a plum <laughs> looking in on itself, right? Yeah. So, wow, I feel really, yeah. I feel wrinkled. I feel oh. free. Oh. Where's the rice? <laughs> <laughs> and another thing, um, Jane Hirschfield is a Buddhist. Um, she doesn't like to be called a Buddhist poet because, you know, she's a human poet. She doesn't mm -hmm. like that kind of limiting. Um, but if you're looking for something for students to kind of introduce them maybe to another culture or another idea, of course you could go get actual Buddhist poetry, um, which I guess this is because she is mm -hmm. Buddhist. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that would, might be another little link, right, for students to look at that whole kind of philosophy and how that feeds into what she 
talks about in her poetry. All right, thanks for watching. Please join the conversation in the comments on YouTube or on Twitter at Trojan Poetry DGN. Also, check out our website at trojanpoetrydgn.blogspot.com.